Hello, Tom Rodziak here, and I'm back with another rubber review. And today I'm going to be doing a review of the Eula Dynarize Inferno. Now this is a rubber I've been using for about a month, uh, mostly on my forehand, and I've been using it in my coaching sessions. So I feel like I've got a pretty good idea about the strengths and weaknesses of this rubber. First of all, let's talk about the rubber itself. It's um, a Dynarize rubber, and like all the Dynarize rubbers, it uses this Hyper Bounce sponge, which I'm not sure if you can quite see there, it's, it's purple sponge underneath the top sheet. And that sponge is quite dynamic, quite jumpy, quite fast. Um, but for the Inferno, they've put on a new type of top sheet, um, and they, you would describe it almost as a sheet with a lot of tension. It's kind of been stretched out a little bit more um, to give it supposedly even more energy transfer when you hit the ball. So what's it like to play with? Well, I'm going to compare the Dynarize Inferno with the Dynarize AGR, which is a rubber um, I've used a lot over the past couple of years and it's a rubber I'm very familiar with. Um, what I found with the Inferno is perhaps it has more gears. Okay, so it, I think it's easier to both play a little more controlled and to slow the rally down if you want, but also when you commit to the shot, then there's an awful lot of speed in the rubber. So it's almost like the top speed of the Inferno is very similar to the top speed of the AGR, but whereas the AGR is kind of like fast all the time, um, to get the speed from the Inferno, you have to commit to the shot fully, and then the ball goes like a rocket. Perhaps the biggest difference I found between the Inferno and the AGR is the spin generation. I feel the Inferno has superior spin generation. When I get the top spin contact, the ball really kicks on the other side. So lovely to spin the ball with. And that can be both from an incoming top spin ball and also against a backspin ball. Um, I feel like, you know, I have to play the shot correctly. It's a little unforgiving, but if you get the proper technique, the proper contact on the ball, then the spin generation is excellent. Very consistent when you're going for those top spin attacks. See, I've probably missed about one there, but everything else has gone on. It's a nice kind of arc over the net, lots of spin generation, feels really good, kind of gripping the ball into the, the rubber, spinning it over. So very good for spin generation. Where I found it a little harder to use was perhaps when I attack a little flatter. So I tend to use a fair amount of what you'd call top spin drives when I, when I attack. And um, I found it perhaps a little bit inconsistent. I found that I was maybe overhitting more than what I normally would do. I think the Inferno just has a slightly higher arc than the AGR, which would again explain why I'm overhitting when I flatten out my attacks a little bit. So certainly I feel like the AGR is a, is a better rubber to hit a little flatter. Um, it is possible to hit a little flatter with the Inferno. I think you just got to adjust the angle a little bit more to keep the ball on the table. So then it's really interesting with the flatter attacks. It's like, sometimes it just goes on fine. And then every one in few, it just seems to jump out long and lose control of the ball. So I feel with the, if I attack a bit flatter, I have to be very accurate with the bat angle. There's very little room for error here. If it just opens up too much and then that ball just 
absolutely flies too fast, too long. For the Inferno, I felt the touch plays a little bit better. Um, and I was able to keep the ball short with my, with my pushes to keep that ball nice and low over the net. Um, so that was nice. And actually, um, you can do some really good pushing with this rubber, keeping it nice and low. And because of the spin generation, you know, it gets some real bite into those pushes. Um, compared to the AGR, where it feels at times it's just a little bouncy, um, with, the, with the extra grip on the Inferno, you can keep those pushes nice and tight. Yeah, really nice. So easy to control the length of the ball. And the extra grippiness on the rubber means you can really bite into that push when you go for the more aggressive push to take the pace off quite easy to do as well. So very nice rubber for keeping the ball a little more controlled. How about serving? Well, I think with both the Inferno and the AGR, they're perhaps not the best rubbers to do really tight short serves because of the, the, the sponge. Um, you have to have very good touch to be able to keep the serve really tight and really short. However, the Inferno is a really nice rubber to do fast, long, spinny serves. Really good. Um, lots of spin and when you commit to that long serve, it whips long. And I found I was causing opponents lots of problems um, doing the fast, long, spinny serves. So overall summary, the Eula Dynarize Inferno. It is a fast rubber, especially if you fully commit to your attacks, the ball will go very fast. Um, but most importantly, it has excellent spin generation. So if you are an attacking player who puts a lot of emphasis on generating a lot of spin, then the Inferno could be a very good choice for you. It could really enhance your game. Okay, so that is my review of the Eula Dynarize Inferno. Um, I've put links where you can purchase this rubber in the description of this video. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. Bye bye.